question is in the hands of Mr. Harmer. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to ask everyone uh, what they would like to achieve over the five years through that five years. What would you like to achieve, starting with Mr. Kelly? Well, as um, an MLC um, answering that question as opposed to, say, being an MHK, then slightly different answers. Um, and it comes back to what the purpose and the role is of an MLC and of LegCo. So within those confines, um, it's ensuring that we have the best governance framework we could possibly have, that we make the best possible decisions, that systems are, uh, decisions are arrived at systematically, um, using evidence, that they're risk-weighted, that they're benefit-weighted, that we can make the best possible decisions. And the reason why I think that's so important, rather than um, anything else, is that I believe that's one of the, the, the closest thing we have to Silver Bullet as, an, as a jurisdiction um, to competing effectively against other, other countries and to ensuring that we have the best health care, that we have the best um, economic policy. We can only do those things if we have the right governance framework. So for me to answer your question is really to make sure how we got the best possible um, governance framework. Thank you. <coughs> Mrs. Humbles. Well, obviously, we've got a very, very big um, job <coughs> ahead in relation to Brexit, and I say that as an island. Um, with the Manx EU repeal bill, if I should get in, I should like to um, be able to, to work with MHKs on um, informing it. Um, you know, we've got an awful lot of um, opportunity that comes off the back of that as well. Um, Ensuring that the right legislation comes through is, is imperative, and obviously work is already ongoing <coughs> doing that, um, but I would like to be able to add into that process. Um, seen through the abortion <coughs> bill, obviously because that has been um, a very, very important issue for everybody thus far, um, and as it has been for me as well in um, dealing with it from the other side of the fence, journalistically. Um, so I'd like to be able to see that um, through. Um, and also EU GDPR, actually, I've got quite an interest in that because I've turned up to a number of events and um, sort of talked to the private sector about it, compliance in um, EU regulation. It would be nice to be able to see that through. Um, yeah, but firming up the role, I suppose, as well, would definitely be um, one of those key things that, that would be nice to see at the end of the five-year period that, um, you know, to actually know what a Legislative Council member does. Thank you. Mrs Corwin. Yes, thank you. Um, I think it's important um, moving forward. The island is always in a precarious position, both from a financial perspective and from a business perspective. So it's important that the government as a whole looks at growth and sustainability of growth so that the island can maintain its position and its ability to fund those uh, projects and uh, benefits that the island residents expect. From a financial services background, which is where my uh, experience is, um, I think it's important that we maintain our position, that we're still welcoming for business and encourage business, and that we have the right legislation to not only encourage businesses to come here but to, and grow the economy, but also to um, protect the underlying customers of that, um, of those businesses. So I think um, obviously there are social concerns such as the abortion bill that is going through and that is a very sensitive issue, but I think it's important that uh, the government looks at a whole at uh, the legislation that actually is the framework for which the people uh, live on this island and ensure that it maintains a balanced position and one which uh, encourages people to relocate and remain here on the island. Thank you. Ms. Jockin. Um, I'd like to be able to be useful to um, use my practical application of legislation to assist in any departments or to have conversations with MHKs for them to put forward policy. I would like to, um, I've got a lot of experience of, of mental capacity law, a lot of experience of funding care, and I think particularly these are issues that are coming to the fore at the moment in society, and I feel that I could be very useful in that way. Um, 
I'd like to have made a difference at the end of five years and for people to say, yes, she did a really good job. She worked very well with everybody. She was very useful. I'd like to maybe promote um, the role of MLC to the general public to be an approachable face and um, to provide good value to the residents of the island. But I do see it very much as a, um, a revising body, a scrutiny body. And so on that basis, I feel there's a limit to exactly what you could achieve yourself individually within that five year period. Uh, I'd be happy to act as, uh, as a champion. I know Mr. Cretney's uh, trying to move forward a uh, champion for older people. I've obviously got a lot of experience working with the elderly and a lot of uh, practical experience, understanding of the issues that concern them. So that, that would be something that I would be very interested in, um, in doing. Thank you, Mr. Fairley. First of all, for a short while, um, as a member of LegCo, I, I would like to be a member of a department, as I said earlier, um, and this is to enable me to learn quickly uh, the workings of government and how, how departments interact with one another. And the, and the purpose of this is then to make me more useful as a member of LegCo. I wouldn't see myself necessarily working in a, in a department indefinitely. I'm mindful that the question was after five years, so before then we would have already had a general election. Um, I, would, I would like very much to be acknowledged as someone who has been effective in scrutinizing the program for government and supporting the government in making sure that that program uh, is, is the right program it should be and is, and is modified appropriately. Um, and apart from finances, the single thing that I consider to be the most important thing for long term, very long term, that we must do is ensure that we have an excellent education system. Because the future of the, of the island depends necessarily on the quality of the people who are coming out from schools and working on the island. I know that there's quite a lot of migration into the island, but nevertheless, half of the population is Manx born. When you think that at the beginning of an administration, 11-year-olds at the beginning of an administration are 16 at the end of an administration, and some of them are entering the workforce. Equally, those who were 16 at the beginning are 21 at the end, and many of them will have just graduated from university. And let's hope that more than half of them come back from university. So I, I would love to see a, a, uh, an excellent education system. Um, I note that we have been compared uh, favourably with the northwest of England. I'm wondering whether we should up our game and say and aim very high and, and aim to be the envy of the world. Why can't our education system be absolutely first class? Thank you very much. Um, and hang on this question, Mrs. Lord Bennett. In terms of the legislative programme, um, a couple of things would broadly be under the banner of consumer protection, I would say. Um, the Landlords and Tenants Bill, it has been in the pipeline for so long and it's the sort of thing that, you know, it really does affect the day-to-day -day people's lives. Um, the Competition Bill. Secondly, and this is something that could be an opportunity, although it will likely be a consequence of, of, of Brexit, is um, we may find that we need to revisit things like laws and uh, around um, safety, traceability, weights and measures, and our current legislation on this is, is actually based on quite outdated UK legislation, so as a consequence of us having to look at it, it would be a chance to update it. And finally, something that I, I don't know if it is on the radar, um, is that I don't know if our laws over here in terms of um, domestic abuse and violence are as up to date as the UK. And the reason I mention this is because in 2015 the UK amended some of their um, some of their legislation to bring in um, coercion and controlling behaviour as a grounds for uh, domestic abuse abuse charges. And um, I just think that you know part really the role of what we need to do is to kind of keep an eye on what things we might need to update and modernise and I'd imagine that given um, the new progress that's going to be made in the UK on this particular topic that within a five year time period we might need to look at that um, but saying that I realise that bringing forward new legislation or emerging legislation it's not 
it's not a LegCo role that really requires you know, it's a political decision, decision as, as to whether that gets advanced, but that's something I'd be interested in, in getting underway in terms of the achievement. Mm -hmm.